My name's Aaron Massey from MrFixItDIY.com, and today I'm gonna show you how to build a simple planter box out of some fence pickets and some deck balusters that uses minimal tools to put together. And you can also move it around if you want to. Now is the perfect time to get your garden in place for the summer, so I wanted to build a simple planter box that I can use to grow a few vegetables this year. As with most projects, this project started with a design that I put together in SketchUp. I wanted to try and make this project as simple as possible so that just about anybody can make it. So I decided to use some fencing materials that you can pick up at your local big box store and a minimal amount of tools. If you'd like to follow along with this project step by step and make your own version of this planter box, there are free downloadable plans for it on my website that outlines everything you'll need to know to knock it out. You can find the links for those plans in the description down below. And while you're there, you might also want to check out some of the links to some of the other free project plans I have available as well. To get started with this project, first I had to build the base of the planter box. Now I'm using redwood for this project because it's naturally rot and insect resistant. And since I'm planting vegetables in it, I wanna make sure that I don't have any pressure or chemically treated lumber that can affect the soil. Now redwood is readily available at the big box store here in California, but if it's not available in your area, you could also use cedar or possibly another naturally rot resistant lumber from your area. I cut a couple of redwood two by fours and spaced them out using these redwood balusters that I'm also using in the project and then screwed everything together with some exterior decking screws. From there, I added some two inch swiveling casters to the base because I want to be able to move this garden around. I'm not really sure where I want it to live long term, so to be able to move it around was important to me and I think it makes it a little bit unique. What I like about the design is that once it's all put together, you won't really be able to tell that it's on wheels and mobile. With the base complete, I added the balusters that will act as the uprights in the corner. Once finished, this planter box will be four feet wide by two feet deep and roughly two feet tall. Now, before I started to add the fence pickets to the side, I added some wire mesh to the base, which will help support the soil from falling through the slats and also keep any critters out from coming up underneath. From there, I started adding the fence pickets to the sides, cutting each one at four feet long and then using the remaining piece on the sides. The lower course should fall about three quarter inch off the ground so that it mostly obscures the wheels below, but leaves enough space for you to be able to push it around on an uneven hard surface. I secured each picket on the sides with the deck screws. Between each course, I use my carpenter's pencil as a quarter inch spacer to leave a gap. A fun fact about a carpenter's pencil is that when it's turned on its side, it's a quarter inch thick. And if you flip it the other way around, it's a half inch thick. So you can always use it as a consistent spacer if you need to. I worked my way up until I had four courses installed all the way around the box. Then I cut off the excess uprights. Now you could do this beforehand if you'd like. Now the weed fabric is water permeable, but I poked some holes in the bottom of it to help with drainage. You could also use some thick plastic in here if you wanted to so that the water doesn't get all over the inside of your box and eventually rot your wood. But since this is kind of a naturally rot resistant wood and I don't need this thing to last forever, I'm just gonna let it weather naturally and kind of go with that look. Next, I decided to add some additional fence pickets to dress up the corners of the box. I just butted two pieces together and screwed them together in a 90 degree corner and attached those to the box. To finish off the box, I'm gonna add a mitered frame around the top, but before I do that, I added a bunch of larger stones to the bottom of the planter to cut down on the amount of soil needed to fill it up, but it still takes quite a bit of soil to fill. Now for the mitered frame around the top of the box, I decided to put about a two and a half inch lip around the outside of the box, which gives a nice work surface around the box to hold gardening tools or plants as you work, and it doesn't intrude too much on the plantable area of the box. Now, if you have a table saw and you wanna use it, you could rip these pickets down to a thinner size if you wanted to. And then finally, I can just add my vegetables and this project is complete. I'm really happy with the way this planter box came out. It's a pretty big planter and it's a little heavy to move around, but just being able to move it is pretty cool. I think I'll end up making a matching one so that I can plant an even larger garden and place them on either side of a gate I have in my backyard. The only thing that I may add to it later is a cage that can go over the top if birds and animals become a problem and start eating it but I'll tackle that down the road if I need to. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. And again, if you'd like more detailed measurements and step-by-step -step instructions for how to build your own planter box, be sure to download the free plans that are available on my website at the link in the description down below. Also, the links to all the tools I used in this project are down below as affiliate links. If you do choose to build this project and need to purchase any tools or materials, 
I'd appreciate it if you use those links. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps support me and allows me to continue to provide free plans like these ones to you guys. Thank you guys for watching and if it's your first time visiting the channel, please hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of the new content I have coming up. And as always, I encourage you to leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought of this project or what kind of project you'd like to see me tackle next. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.